Welcome to Next Gen Ultimate's coverage of the 2012 WIF Diff World Ultimate and Guts Championships. In the Men's Masters Final, we have Australia and Canada. Huge pull right away from the indomitable Tom Regaki, Australia in zone. Mar Ortiz. Lines up a blade. Just showing what he's got. Hammer to Mike Grant. Two of the biggest names in Ultimate. Regaki, Grant. Ortiz again with the disc. Takes control. Joey Hussein for the goal. Canada one, Australia zero. And Canada striking right away with really clean offense. No trouble with the transition no D. No trouble with the transition D. And classic Canadian offense in the zone, just lining up the blades. Chase, this Masters game features two players arguably in the top 10 players of all time. Certainly. Tom Rogacki for Australia and Mike Grant for Team Canada. But the names, they're not the only two great players in this game. With the disc right now, we see Al Nichols. Clear Hall of Famer, I think. Yeah, just a part of that original group of Furious George guys that got them their three rings. And an absolutely sensational defender at the open level. Just into a his monster. 40s. Just a monster in handler defense. Okay, a junk from the Canadians. The Australians patiently threw it. Regaki stretching the field. Sanderson. Whoa! What a grab. A very impressive speed. And I think you see what, in particular in the later half of his career, in the open division, you see Tom Regracki doing what he does so well, which is use his length to, to get big throws off to speedy receivers. Two quick offensive strikes, one for each team, 1-1 one, one, Australia, Canada. Australia Masters team not quite as stacked across the board with height as the open team was. Clearly Tom Regaki at six foot seven, six, seven, maybe eight. A very tall player, but but many right now you see on this D line, not the consistent height that I think has has become sort of the trademark of Australian, of Australian Ultimate on the international stage. I'm curious to see how they use it here. Man defense, it appears they're coming down actually in a junk. They're gonna play Ma man And here. they're gonna play man. They might have broken that one off on the out of bounds pull. Ortiz with the disc, straight up mark. Frame, high back end, what a throw. Actually, that's Mike ends with the disc. It's a pick in the lane. Under whiff, under whiff diff rules, that is coming back. Ends with the disc. Ends going deep. Everybody gathers for Australia. But one Canadian is all it takes. Atkinson with the goal. 
Great coverage there by the Australia D. In pursuit. In pursuit to send for three or four defenders, but Atkinson with just too much space and a really great throw by Mike Enns. He's another one of those players, played a lot of years on some really good Furious teams. Great Spot skill on set. Throw. Atkinson takes the hit. So far early here, we've seen an offensive showcase. No turns. No turns. Mostly man from these teams. We saw a little bit of transition right away from the Australians, but I would anticipate between a couple veteran teams like this, they'll try different defenses just to see if they can rattle the cage get up, maybe steal a break here or there. And certainly between the years that all of these players have played, there is a wealth of strange defenses that you might see. Guerris. Bunwell. Regaki. Pick called. Comes back to Sanderson. Regaki, huge forehand across the field. The Australians moving. Two Canadians get pieces of it. That is an unconventional look unconventional, to a great receiver. Unconventional is a charitable way to describe that pass. <laughs> the inside out backhand. Touch, One, touch. two, three. Pancake Regaki. It's hard, I think, for teams that have such a big target like that. To resist the temptation. To resist. And I know we've seen that some out of Team USA in the open side. With Kittredge. With Kittredge. And even, I mean, even the Brits who they're playing in the finals have at times given in to the temptation, I think, wisely to just throw it at their big guys. Yeah. But but there it is. I thought Goal. we saw, though, from this Australian team, they're more than just Tom Regaki. Certainly, certainly. They're running the field very aggressively. It's always intriguing to see, too, how a team fits in just – a powerful weapon like that. Like how they fit a superstar in. Uh, yeah, I mean, we saw that with Team Canada. Again, in the, in the open side, how do you fit in a John Hassel? I think Regaki plays a really similar role on this team, which is they're going to say he is the centerpiece of our offense, but the offense works really hard with all of these other pieces to make the available spaces for him. Woolridge, ends, Roberts, Hussein, quick offense from the Canadians, Roberts, that's too easy, it's too easy, it's too easy, we're going to see the finish here to Roberts, Nice throw. Yeah, Joey Hussein. You saw Canada start that play off with a pretty classic Furious George clear out. Clear out underneath and then bring the. From the sideline. Yeah. Woolridge able to get a lot of yards and they just run it up that sideline. The whole way, no, no troubles anywhere. Woolridge, Roberts. Australia's gonna have to make some adjustments defensively to get some pressure somewhere 
even if it's the kind of pressure we just saw the U.S. masters use, women's, the women's masters use, where they're just going to create pressure by making them throw more passes. Yeah. Every pass is an opportunity for a turnover. You know, there's a light rain coming down. It makes the disc a little slick. There is no wind. But nonetheless, every pass is an opportunity for a turnover. And if you can slow a team down. And make them go more horizontal. Yeah. Certainly. Canadians on D. Man. Regaki. To the sideline. Back to Regaki. Great bid. And Regaki with a huge forehand again to Sanderson. Sanderson. Wow. Tom Regaki shrugs off the poach defense. The hit, the huge hit from Klassen. Like it just ain't no thing. Boom, right there. Stands and up and throws a rocket. Back to what Australia might need to do to slow down this Canada's team's offense here. I actually thought they were on the right approach in the first couple of points when they brought a transition. Yes, I agree. I think if you can get them set back on their heels as an offense and force them to throw that extra swing, yeah. they don't get those big horizontal, like those they're big gain, those those just those huge gainers. gainers to their big receivers. You just, just slow it down, make them slow to a standstill, and then you transition to your man and they're set on their back foot. You know, I think the Australians might be falling in a bit of a trap of worrying too much about Mike Grant and not worrying enough about some of these other pieces, particularly Mara Ortiz with the disc. He has been lethal for them so far. Atkinson. Roberts. Looks to ends. 4-3. Not something I have seen Mark Roberts do a ton, which no. is turn and throw downfield, especially to the away. But just a great throw. Yeah. But, and again, you got to stop him somewhere. Too easy. Nice pickup by Roberts. Little hook cut from ends. We hear the cheering crowds of uh, the award ceremony for women's masters. Japan won bronze, Canada silver, Team USA gold, and the German women winning the Spirit Award this year. It is 4-3. Canada up on Australia. Chase, we have yet to see a turnover. We are yet to see a turnover. That is accurate. I think it speaks to, I mean, clearly, these teams in the finals. For, There's a, reason. A, lot of for a reason. There's a lot of quality players here. But I think, like you were saying, a lot of people would look at each of these rosters and pick out a Mike Grant and pick out a Tom Regaki. But the pieces around them right now are really what's impressing me. Sure, they're great weapons. But the, the ability for everyone oh. else on this Australia Here's to our first speak turnover. of the devil. A miscommunication, a broken off cut, and Burwell gives the Canadians their first opportunity for a break. And you know, no it looks like Team Canada also running pretty strict O and D lines here. This is our first look at their defensive offense. And no Tom Regaki in the game. Huck right away. And an unfortunate Anthony Maley drop. With the unfundamental pancake, pancake layout. Drops it. Burwell right away again. The big McDowell in pursuit. Doesn't even jump. Just reaches up and takes it.
Nichols to pick up the disc. Great grab there going Great down the line. Just out of bounds. Nichols. Wow, that's a lot of size. Maley. Frame. Hangs on. Nichols. Could be a turnover. Uncharacteristic. Uncharacteristic turnover from Al Bob Nichols there. He had Cowan wide open, deep, and just rushed. And he knew it even before he caught the disc. And he I, rushed the throw. I was surprised by that, especially after the throw that he threw going away on the previous possession. Yeah. His backhand does not falter often. So after... Of course, as soon as we mention that there haven't been any turnovers, immediately there's three. Four. Credit, credit these teams for being aggressive, though. Both of them still throwing away. Fours. Yates with a great run. How about that throw? That was a great throw. I really like the Australians right here staring down the teeth of a gnarly defense and throwing right through it with Hux. After a pair of turnovers each side, Australia scores 4-4. Four, four. Tom Regacki in for a second deep point. I wonder if they'll use his size here to anchor some kind of junk defense. I think if you're going to try it against this team, and it's a great opportunity, now's the time. Play junk. Let give Regaki an opportunity to play D without having to use his legs. Yeah, just occupying a lot of space. The spaces. And here, Team Canada below us winning silver. Hussein. Ortiz. Hussein. Ends. Roberts. A really incredible matchup here. Mauro Ortiz with Tom Regacki on him. I love that matchup. I love that matchup. Because it awesome it, choice. It it and he just shuts Ortiz down here. And on the mark, even if Ortiz gets it, he's got to try to see and around find a way around Tom Regacki. So much size. Ortiz. And he does get it. You see him having to move back and forth. Just to see around. Just to see around. Grant. Ortiz. And Ortiz, I think, realizes that Regaki's not ends. Lines up a big backhand. Goal Canada. Mike ends. What a throw to Atkinson. The Canadian offense, a ton of patience there. Really waiting for their shot, and then when they get it, making good on the angles that Australia gave them. All these Canadian hucks have been backhands. Switch to flick. That's a tough one. I, you let Mauro Ortiz like and Canada Mike Grant, two huge flicks. It's wet, though. It is wet. And you, the backhands are killing you. It's wet, but the rain has stopped, and, and the backhands are killing you. I, I agree mean, with that. One way to just say it is, like, they are killing us with backhands. 
you just play forehand just just to see what happens. Just to see what happens. Sure, yeah. sure. I think there's more in the playbook though on defense for this Australia team. I would like them see to go to the well, see them go to the well on some of their junk looks. You know, get it out there early, see how Team Canada responds, mix it up a little bit, and find out what's going to do good for you in this game. Burwell. Right away to Regaki. Can he get there? No problem. Oh, a bit of a taunt there. And Regaki and Dunk McDonald, pretty close in height, but you see the breakaway speed there, Tom Regaki. Yeah, no chance. I mean, in the open field, that guy is a monster. Five five on serve. And after a few miscues yep. in that fourth or fifth point. On a point where Tom Regaki was not in. Both teams' offenses looking much, much cleaner. Still taking good aggressive shots. And I like every shot they've thrown so far. But really clean. Still no junk from either team. Save that first sort of transition in the and first point for Australia. But I mean, it only lasted maybe a, a pass and a half. As soon as Ortiz right. threw that blade over it, it was done. Ortiz. And here's the junk. It's a one, two, three, one. Grant, little air bounce picked up by Ortiz. Big hammer across the field. Atkinson, Roberts. Man from the Australians, Ortiz with the disc. Grant. Roberts. Ortiz. Great D by the Australians. Bit of a collision there between Ortiz and the diving Australian defender. I think Ortiz is trying to argue that on the stoppage, Whelan's should be on the ground. Disc in Ortiz. Hussein. Ortiz, Atkinson. Goal Canada. Save. And Ortiz and Atkinson causing the Australians so much trouble. I really like what the Canada offense did on that play, in particular with Atkinson, he played kind of a dual role. At first he was big downfield strike, got a big hammer out of the junk. Yeah, great throw from Mauro Ortiz. Ortiz. And then he comes in in the end zone and plays a little bit more of a, you know, a lateral sort of either iso cutter or handler position. And again, the connection from Ortiz you know, especially in this game, he's a really quick cutter. Yeah, I think I think being and being able to in that position moving both from the downfield position to a little bit closer to the disc allows him to exploit that in a lot of different lanes.
Farewell. Fergaki. Sanderson well defended. Dropped. Short field opportunity for Team Canada. Great defense by the Australian O team's defense. Really smart coaching. They're just causing confusion all over the place. Tight on the handlers, a little bit looser downfield. McDonald poaching again, but this time they beat it to Alba, but Alba flips. Frame for the first break of the game. 7 5 Canada. See the poach down in the lane. Nichols. Frame. Great movement there by Duncan McDonald. To Just generate. to get out and run the lane from the Hamler spot and it opens up everything on the counter flow. Team Canada uh, using only the fifth turnover of the game managed to get their first break and the first break of the game Give them a two goal lead, 7-5. Late in the first half of Team Canada versus Australia in the Open Masters Final. Nichols with the pole. I was about to talk about what a great puller Al Bob was. And you know, he's not just a great puller, but in term, I mean, he's technically a great puller, but I've always felt like Al was one of those veterans who knows the importance of just getting it on the field. He's happy, usually I feel like, to just get it there. That might have just been a weird wet disc or hit himself on the way by. I don't feel like you see a lot of out-of-bounds Talk here from points. Australia. And another opportunity for Canada. Right away they go deep. Foul on the throw. Whelan's on the mark. And the Aussie crowd does not like the call. What they don't like about it is that the thrower initiated all that contact. Maybe it's a foul, but Whelan didn't really have much of a part in making that foul happen. No. McDonald. Maley. Lots of motion. Not much yards. Great bid by Whalen. Nichols. Clausen. Foul called. Did you think that was a foul? I did. Yes. Bauer with the disc. Blossom. Maley. Blossom, it's too far, but I think that a pick's going to bring it back anyway. Kind of an incidental trip. 
defender calls foul. This comes back. This comes back and with diff rules and Canada takes. Bauer wants a timeout. A deserved timeout, I think. Chance for a second break. Only the second break of the game would give them a three goal lead. Smart decision by the Canadians. After word from our sponsors, we'll be back. Welcome back to the 2012 WIF Diff World Ultimate and Club Championships. Open Masters Final, Canada 7, Australia 5. Canada 10 yards out looking for their second break of the game and a three goal lead. The Canadian, with the, disc. the Canadian offense on that last possession, they were amazing at valuing the disc and retaining possession but they just weren't getting anywhere. It's like their no, cutters were clogged, and the, the poachy Australian defense did an incredible job of generating uncertainty such that and Canada's throws weren't going. This one's coming back. It looks like all the way back. I think there was a foul call on Anthony Maley getting a collision with Jimmy Ronnie right there. Twice in a row now, Australia kind of shooting themselves in the foot on D by calling a foul. Canada on obliges been, on the turnover. On what would have been a turnover. But it comes back. Nice grab. Incredible pickup. And he's just going to go right to the well. What wow. a throw. Catch. Throw. Flossing. What a play from Cowan. Here's the catch. Should be a turnover. Probably not the wisest choice. On a rope, though. What a delivery. I don't think he saw the Australian poacher coming off the back. That's why it was not a great choice. But. Duplessis can't get there. Eight five Canada over Australia. You know, the Australians should call a timeout here. Why, Lou? Game's getting away from them. They've given up three in a row. You Two don't even need to say anything particularly. You don't even need rocket science here, or even need to make an adjustment. Just call a timeout to stop the Canadian momentum. You've got two. I agree. You're right at the end of the half. And there wouldn't necessarily, as you're saying, be any particular adjustment. I would. I mean, I want this Australian offense to be attacking. Yeah. Just to take the timeout and calm everyone down. Campbell. Canada comes down with a junk Very that immediately pushing. transitions. Rigaki. Campbell. Burwell. Campbell. Rigaki. Sanderson wide open. Goal. But so is Ryan. And the Australian Eight, crowd really goes nuts. Yeah. They have a strong showing there up in the upper deck. And the lower deck. And the lower deck. Really great offense from Australia the whole way. Patient, good lateral disc movement. They find Rigaki all the legwork they've done throughout the point gets him an easy finish to Ryan. Sanderson was there as well. Either one of them could have finished the play. The best thing I saw in that, that point by Team Australia was getting Tom Ragaki out running and having him pull a couple of unders yeah. I think that opens up the rest of the field for everyone to kind of coalesce around him. 
and his away look options. He just delivers. He just delivers. Australia six, Canada eight. We'll take a short break and be back with you in a moment. Welcome back to the 2012 Whiff Diff World Ultimate and Gut Championships. I'm Lou Burris. And I'm Chase Farling Beckley. It's Canada eight, Australia six. Australia pulling, looking to get back the two breaks that they've given away. It's been a really clean game. Only five turnovers so far. If you're Team Canada here, I think you're really, the game has gone perfectly for you so far. Uh, when you look at some of the studs that are on this Canada roster that came over from Furious George, with maybe only the notable exception of Al Bob Nichols, this is their O team. You have Mike Grant, Mike Enns, Mauro Ortiz. I mean, those are guys that got it done for a lot of years for Furious George. And so far, outside of one point with a lot of turnovers, they've really gotten it done on offense. And that was the D squad. And that was the D squad. And they're going, Ortiz reaches for Enns deep, and it's too far. First mistake by the Canadians, Australia on offense. Bloomer. Just coming back in. Forcing back in. Bloomer. Too far. And on that collision, Yates comes up hobbling. Great bid by both players. I'm not sure there's not a foul call there. On Hussein? Yeah. Great I don't bid. Think so. I'm no it call. Seemed like he just came up hurting. No call. Radaki coming in to play D. Tom Radaki in Australia sensing, clearly looking at the scoreboard, understanding the magnitude of this point and the need to get a D here in order to prevent Canada going into the half with but a 9-6 lead. But if you're gonna play on D, would you have brought him in on the pull? And they're gonna test right away to ends. Or Mauro Ortiz just casually walking off the field after delivering the goal to Mike Enns. No chance for the defender. And Mike Enns is fired up. At halftime, five total turns, three by Australia, two by Canada. Canada sitting on a two break, nine, six lead. They will be pulling the second half to become world champions. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the 2012 Whiff Diff World Ultimate and Gut Championships live from Osaka in Japan. Folks, this absolutely incredible feed that you see is brought to you by Elemental Encoding Technologies. Chris Color, awesome replays. Anywhere in the world, baby. Elemental Technologies. Second half, Canada nine, Australia six. Canada starting on D. At halftime, Chase, we talked with Jonathan Woolridge and Joey Hussein of Team Canada. They L seemed very confident about of how confidence. their offense, offense was going. Absolutely. And, and I think that they're, I mean, clearly they're right. Team Canada's offense has been basically unstoppable for the one Australians. Turnover. One turnover. And they got that one back quickly. And what's interesting about that to me is that 
historically, Team Canada's, you know, really when they break open games, it's with their defense. I think if they're going to break this game open, they might have to switch a matchup on Tom Regaki because he's keeping this Australian team. And maybe bring Mike Enns over to play D. Maybe bring Mike Enns in over to play D, or even just give Tom a different look. Right now, I think Duncan McDonald, a great player, but trying to match Tom height for height isn't really his danger. And a great block right away. Al Nichols. Foul from Regaki. Maley. McDonald. Regaki's going to say Nichols was out. John Frame stepping in. Interesting. To say something. Nichols. Great D from the Australians. Regaki on Nichols. Size versus quickness. Clausen. Sanderson, great D on Maley in the lane. Really nice bid by Tom Regaki. Al Nichols, a sensational grab. Away to Clausen. Nice move up the line by Clausen. Break, break Canada, 10-6. Great start for the second half. Australia needs to claw their way back into this. I like the D they played, though. Really wonderful D. But a great move. Defender needs to trust the mark there and not give the line. Right. Open side really. What do you I make mean, of the backhand force? That Australia brought to that Canada? They, that they've used kind of consistently throughout this game. It is maybe not the choice one would think of right at first in tough conditions with a wet disc because it allows I think people to line up that big backhand huck. And we certainly saw in the women's game some forehands that did some crazy weird things stuff. just because of how Definitely. wet the disc was. But in this case you know in a lot of ways the personnel here on this Canada team bigger forehand throwers in most cases, than backhand throwers. I think it's a reasonable choice. Don with the disc. Burwell. Strange D, Sanderson. Don, Burwell. I think we're going to go a long way back on a pick, probably three, two throws. Frame just getting tangled up in the middle of the field. Some confusion early in that point from the Canadians. Botched a matchup. Australia was able to work it easily past midfield. Burwell, Don. And really great churning offense here from the Australians. They're being very patient. Pick called. I like it. Yeah, it's really almost like a really clean, almost kind of classic 90s vert stack offense almost. And he reaches deep, but the throw is 
and that left out of bounds. You don't like that choice. I don't like that choice. I really don't. I think they're getting a lot under. And they're getting a lot with that and, churn. And they're getting a lot with that churn from the handlers. There's no reason. I mean, the maybe three, huck yeah. it. Maybe huck it, but not that one. Maybe huck it, but not that one. Nichols. Plossen. Can he get there? He does. And calls calls timeout. Time Great get. And I like the timeout call. He didn't really have anything. Didn't have a lot to look at. It's early. It's early here in the second half. But if they can get a second break here to, in the second half, that's going to put about five goals. That's a serious hole for Australia. Let's take a break, Chase. Welcome back to the 2012 Whiff Diff World Ultimate and Guts Championships. On behalf of Next Gen Ultimate, I'm Lou. And I'm Chase. We've got before you the Open Masters Finals. Team Canada really hitting on all cylinders. Up 10-6 with the disc to make it five point lead. Interesting switch here for Team Canada. They bring in Mauro Ortiz. Mauro Ortiz off of the timeout call, comes in on offense and has the disc in his hands. Is there an injury there? Um, I certainly think Claussen, I mean, he went down on his shoulder when he made that disc. He might have been shaken up. It's a great, great choice great to pick. break in Ortiz. The Australians playing very poachy. Don hammers Nichols just a little bit late getting there. Australians still poaching. Lots of overload up front. Crafty foul call by Al Nichols. Don says zero. Really a big mistake by he, Don to give him a foul. He can't be Blade. pleased with himself. Sanderson can't get there. 11-6. At halftime, we talked with Tom Regacki about the zone, and he said they didn't want to play it because the weather was too nice, and partly because it lets off throws like that. At any time during this weekend when that wind has been coming over the top of the bleachers, there's no it's way been that a can tough, be completed. Tough, swirling. Absolutely. And Al Bob Nichols, I think, maybe registers that. Yeah. Maybe just. Oh, has he been throwing long enough that he knows this is a thrower's, I mean, these are thrower's conditions right now. Maybe yeah. a little bit wet, but certainly that disc has been dry for quite a while. It's flown a couple of times. Lines up a big blade. Yeah. Completely still right now. Just the tiniest breadth of air coming from the south. And Lou, as we spoke to before, also a lot more humidity today, which yeah. I think just makes the air, there's more mass in the air. And that throw, I mean, it's just much more predictable. A lot heavier air. McDonald with the pull. Regaki, junk from the Canadians. Big McDonald Donald in the back. Weres. Campbell. Throws a floater, Regaki in pursuit. Little bit of a show, and Regaki is not pleased with the choice. McDonald. Frame blocked. Not the right choice from John Frame. Burwell to Regaki. Regaki, big blade to Bloomer, blocked. Nice block, Al Bob Nichols. Boy, Al. Al Nichols coming in with a great D. And I think Bloomer was not pleased with himself. No, He but had steps, but great play by Al Bob. I don't like the choice from Tom Regaki. He never looked at anything 
accept the end zone on that possession. Really starting to feel the pressure of needing to score, maybe losing a little trust in, in the churning offense that has been successful for Australia. Big swing, can Maley get there? He can't. Turnover in the end zone. Burwell with the disc, walks to the front. They're gonna take their time and set it up. Frank and Maley both come down and poach. Big blade to Regaki, defended by McDonald. Nice grab, Tom Regaki. Really great D by McDonald. Yeah. That is two That's hard to big stop. boys going up to the disc. You know, I, any other player, that's a terrible choice. But they go to the well, and he comes up with it. Yeah. I think Tom has to be sitting on that line right now and steeling himself to the fact that he's going to have to play the rest of this game. I don't think so. Really? No, if they're going to win, this Australian team has showed real quality and depth. I agree. Throughout, if they're going to win, those guys are going to have to start delivering with that consistently churning offense and letting, letting Tom Rogacki be just a piece of what the rest of those guys have done because they've done a lot of really nice work in this game. Agreed. But it's hard to argue that Australia isn't much better with him on the field. Well, yeah. Going both ways. Right. But that doesn't mean they're better with him on the field. Tired. Every point tired, exactly. But I want to see the Australians play some junk. I like the junk they played the one point, and we are going to get to see it. Ortiz. You got to get more pressure on Ortiz. Great forehand around to Grant. Back to Ortiz. Dodi on the mark. Hussein. Ortiz, deep in his own end zone. Hammer to Grant. Very calm conditions. Dodi on the mark. Ends. Ortiz, trap. Hand high to stop the over. Nice little luffy forehand to Hussein. Blade around to ends. No, that's Woolridge. Finds ends. Hussein. Ortiz. Ends. Ortiz. Roberts. Nice and easy zone offense from the Canadians. Here's the finish. They get caught in transition. They do. I think if that can, transition can come maybe four or five passes earlier. When they're with, bleeding down the forehand sideline. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do have Tom Regaki in the back. You'd rather transition, in my opinion, when the most dangerous part of the field is back behind the defense. Yeah. As opposed to transitioning when the most dangerous part of the field, i.e. the end zone, is in front of the stack. I like the junk look. What I would, the adjustment to make is the wings need to be looking opportunistically to get blocks on those big cross field throws. You saw the hammer to Grant on the backhand side, some big forehands over to the far side. In conditions like this, you're going to get a block, unless a team makes a dumb mistake, you're going to get a block on that kind of a pass. Australians down five, needing an answer on offense. Burwell. Rigaki. Back to Rigaki. Lots of options. Burwell. Burwell. 
No call. Interesting no call. I think just an unfortunate slip. Yeah. You see Junker running deep. He sees the throw short. He comes back under. He gets tripped here. I mm. I think it's a good no call. It's kind of a courageous no call in that he didn't have position and in trying to come back and get position, he went down. Big stop here for the Australians. Nichols marked by Doty. Foul call. Aldon out in the flat, I think just got run over. By Clausen. By Clausen. Clausen. Very physical march from the Australians. Clausen. Nichols. Doty recovers. Clausen. Rogakian on a bid. Contact. Ton of contact. Anthony Maley comes up limping. We see the bid by Rogaki. Just catches Maley in the side. Aunt Maley's all right. It's going to be checked in here. Very patient offense from Furious. Sorry, from Team Canada. Cowan, marked by Burwell. Nichols by Doty. Another foul call. Team's, team's starting to feel the fatigue of the point, using the calls to control the tempo of the game. Clausen. Maley. Great, Great bid. bid. Maley. Fluffy, Rigaki. Missed throw by Maley. Don. And he just takes a prayer. Maley with the D. Not the right choice. No. Junker broken his cutoff anyway. He but had, he, even if he hadn't, that's going to be that such throw has to be, a long, fast throw. It's got to go 120 to the back corner to be successful. Canada takes a timeout. Yep, Alcow with the timeout call. Chase, while they're discussing strategies, Fury's making an offensive plan, Australia getting some defensive fortitude. Let's take a break. Welcome back to Next Gen Ultimate's coverage of the 2012 World Ultimate and Gut Championships. I'm Lou. And I'm Chase. Open Masters Finals. Canada really beginning to dominate this game up 12-7 with a chance to make it 13. Australia has to dig in their heels right here and get a stop on this offensive possession by Canada. They're looking at really dire straits if Canada puts another one on the board. They need a block on the reset. Just pressure on those resets. Make it tough. Don on Clausen. Dropped. That's the break they need. Where and there's a call on Clausen the play. Clausen calling a foul. And the Australian heavy crowd is really not pleased with that. I think we might have to dump some of those cheers. There's the throw and the drop. You know, under whiff diff rules, that actually should stand as a turnover because the throw is catchable, but it doesn't. Nichols with the disc. 
Claussen, it's fitted by Don, far side. Cowan. D-team offense from Furious, so patient on the unders. Nichols, back to the middle. Mark Badoti. McDonald, access to the break side. Maley, 13-7, Canada, all Canada. And a really sweet little alley-oop inside out by, by Alba going to McDonald. Frees up a nice, easy break look right here. McDonald setting up great space and just catches Tom Regacki sleeping. Team Canada's really beginning to run away with this game. And Australia is walking slowly back to the line. You, no can, see, you can see Tom Regacki breathing heavily as he's it's giving all, instructions. Yeah, working. All those guys are working really hard. They're just not getting the results Little miscues of that here hard work. They have two timeouts, this, and they have not, they haven't used either of them to try to stop this Canadian momentum. No, I'm a little surprised by that as well. I think especially now that you're in a position where some of your better players are having to play every, I mean, certainly when Canada breaks, your O team comes back on, but their great players haven't had a rest here in a while. Booth to Sanderson, Booth. Booth, or Sanderson. Back to Booth. I like this look from Australia, moving quickly. Booth doing some really nice work. Call on the mark. I think we're seeing a fast count argument and possibly explanation of the rule. Adam Chachanov not not pleased with the call but it's coming in zero Regaki Sanderson Regaki Regaki. Booth. Great possession offense by the Aussies here. Sanderson. Booth. Pick called by Chachanov. Little disconnect though between, between what Booth is doing and what's happening downfield. Lots of running but the timing by the Australians is off just half a step. Sanderson. Booth up the line, not thrown. Booth. And a mistake by Booth at the end of that possession after such beautiful work. No, wait. Chachanov's going to take an injury sub. And foul on the, th and there's a foul on the throw. No, no foul. Mike ends coming in, in transition. Australia really had done a great job of valuing the disc on that play until the Great opportunity for, for Canada on the sideline. They need a reset, there's no timeouts. And Campbell gives them the reset they need with, with the, the ticky tack foul. Great D. And a foul call. This is not, Enns is not going to make friends with this call. It's going back. Here's the play ends. 
The D off the backside. Really great backside D. You can kind of see Ant's complaint just because the amount of contact there, but it's not a foul. Position was clearly, clearly. with Australia. Maley. Nichols. Back to Maley in space. Looking at the line. He does everything right. Except catch it. Ex except catch it. Yates. Rigaki, nice scuber. And Rigaki. Ryan. Nichols calls the push off. And this Australia crowd is really getting after Canada. Rigaki Here. throws it on a rope going deep. Here, here's the contact. A little. No call. I think Nichols is waving the call off. Sanderson, a weak side to Yates, and he's in. Goal, Australia. Campbell, Campbell with the goal. 13-8. A wise but intriguing decision by Al Bob Nichols. To let the call go. To let the call go. And here we see the hammer just out to space. Campbell, goal. goal. Nice throw on a still day. Anything there is going to be going to be a goal. Thirteen eight. Aussie now with a chance to play D finally. And they need to find something, whether it's a junk D, whether it it's an adjustment on the mark, or just an emotional adjustment to bring a level of intensity to put pressure on this Canadian O squad. So far, in eight chances, the Canadians have only, the Australians have only been able to force one turnover and no breaks. Bloomworth the pull. Hussein Ortiz. Junk set from, jump set from the Aussies. Ortiz to Grant. Ortiz pursued. Is this a box and one on Ortiz? Back into the junk. No mark on Hussein. Grant. Ends open. Grant looks it off. Now under to ends. And shakes off the foul. Roberts. Hussein, can he get there? He does. 14 8. Nice, easy offense once again by Canada. I like that junk set from Australia, but they came out of it, and in that transition, the there, Canadians get rolling. There's just too many weapons on this Canada side. Mike Enns in particular, though, is having a great game as a cutter. Hussein looks. Grant has ends coming out. Holds it, ends comes under. Roberts wide open. And then the mark gets caught. Turns the corner to Hussein. Canadian fans are psyched. Australians searching for a way back into this game. Down six. Bank, bank one on offense, get the D back out, see what the D can do. Going the rest of the way. I agree, you have to stop Canada's pull play. In my opinion, it's gonna be tough to play a full 70 against Canada as Aussie's D team if they go junk the whole way. I think you have to go man. But first they have to score this. Don. Go, 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 
Ware is isolated, but they don't throw it to him. Swung to Doty. Don finds Regaki. He's got Sanderson in space. Great throw from Regaki to Sanderson. Goal. No goal. Sanderson. Sanderson with a really uncharacteristic drop. He's had a, a great, great game looking yeah. away. Another beautiful throw by Tom Regaki. And opportunity to pancake. He chooses instead to go for the two-handed catch. Now Canada's going the other way. Chance to make it a seven goal lead. Cowan with the disc. Dropped on the sideline. Too casual. Burwell with the disc. Rigaki. Really nice throw by Don. Burwell. But, uh, but a really nice throw. Burwell. Just. I mean, in. Great the effort by McDonald, but. Yeah. Wow. That is a crazy throw. I, really. I, I don't like it. I know you don't like it. This uh, this Aussie Wait. team, though, they cue off of what Tom Regaki does, and I know. he sets up that cut. He's but clearly confident. Yeah. He's clearly confident in what he can do. His thrower's clearly confident in what he can do. They line it up. They score a goal. I think you go to the well there. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I agree with Regaki's cut oh, in yeah. that position. Okay. But once he's there, I think the thrower just has faith. If the Australians are going to win this game, it has to be about more than Tom Regaki. True. Booth, Burwell. True. Sanderson, they've got to come up big for this team. I agree that everything that Australia has done so far, for the most part, has been built around Tom Regaki. But this Canadian team is is too deep Very and too strong. You can't beat that with one guy. Hussein. Oh, lovely bid. Comes free on the ground. Hussein calling foul on Booth. I like the choice to go man here, though. Yeah. If you're Aussie, you just, you need something. And they almost. Robert's almost coming up with it. That was a really athletic almost grab by Mark Roberts. Still isolated in space. Aussie's got to get it done here on the mark if they want to slow down this big chewing movement here. Ortiz, ends wide open. Smart foul by Flufford, Fulford. If he does not foul Ortiz there, it's a goal to end. At the same time, the Canadians are so comfortable with this style of marking, physical style of marking. It's almost as though they've built that stoppage into their game plan. Great bid, Hussein's able to come up with it. Is he in bounds? He's not. He's out. We've got an injury though. Booth, shaken. He's okay. Bloomer to pick it up. Never came in. And here we see an opportunity for the Aussie D team. To get a break. To get a break, a sorely needed break. First miscue for Mar Ortiz this game. And it was narrow. 
Okay. Mike Grant taking a sub. McDonald coming on the field. There's a lot of discussion out here. Both teams just taking their time, getting what they want. Charlie Bloom with the disc. Mark Atkinson. Crowd's getting kind of restless. Interesting move here. Mauro Ortiz way is. off the back of the stack. Yeah, leaving Fulford so much space. Everybody runs deep when Regaki gets it. Fulford, Regaki. Fulford. Great D from the Canadians. Regaki, hammer, Ortiz in pursuit, goal. Break Australia. Not the prettiest throw in the world. So much gets, space. Just gets so the job done. So much space, yeah. 14-10. Nice offense. And Ozzy may be stealing a little bit of momentum here after the miscue from a normally totally steady-handed. Fulford with the soccer celebration. Totally steady-handed. Ortiz. Wiftiff will find him $10,000 for the shirts off celebration. And I think he automatically sits out the next match as well. Good thing there isn't one. Mar Ortiz, you're saying. He's coming back on this line. Yeah. I think Canada, clearly, they're just going to operate business as usual. Other than that one miscue, their offense has been flawless. And in a lot of ways, I think Mauro, we've talked about this before, Mauro is the key potentially to slowing down their offense. Yeah, if they can get a matchup for Mauro, they can, they can control the Canadian offense. And really what it's about, in my opinion, is wow, making him push his pace. A little bit of acting from Woolwich, but a lot of lumber. Ortiz. Woolridge. Ortiz, holy, stealing the disc away. Feels it, he's going for Roberts. A big backhand to Roberts. Morrow, Ortiz. What a catch. Where did that come from? It came from his defender's back. Ouch. That's just a demoralizing catch and throw. 15-10. And Mark Roberts all alone, using his breakaway speed to just tool. It looked like a turnover. I mean, it was a turnover. Do, do we give Do we give Mauro credit for the block? <laughs> that was a great catch. Yeah, like we're gonna give we're gonna give Woolridge the turnover. Mauro gets a block back. Mauro gets a block and then the assist. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Put it on the stat sheet. Stats for this game are gonna be done by League Vine. Levine.com for all your ultimate stats needs. McDonald with the pull. Canada, two points from the World Championship.
the Australian fans. At war with the Canadian fans. It's great. Two distinct sections. Look at that hammer. Sanderson. Regaki. Those two guys in space, deadly. High count. Great what weak side vision. throw. Doty with the disc. Burwell. Regaki calls for it and gets it. 15-11. What do you think of that in zone o? That's tough to defend against. You'll see Regaki just Mc with the point. Here it is. Over and here. And McDonald picks a good line and goes up strong. It's just a little out of his reach. That's a really tough throw to defend against, clearly. But you I think mean, the You mean the like cross field, weak side hammer to the 6 Well, but guy? Duncan's close, and I think yeah. a lot of people would say he's got to get that. The issue being the throwers clearly lining it up yeah. to go to Regaki. McDonald has to turn the corner, turn all the way around, and in a split second, spot up the place where he's going to take his jump and go. He has a millisecond of adjustment to make to be yeah. able to get that at his highest jump. Yeah. And he does well, you know, if it's a worse throw, he can run it out, but that quick, coming down quick, almost bladey hammer, yeah. it's so, like, it just comes down so quick that as a defender, you have no time to adjust. You just do your best. He clearly did his best. Goal, Australia. Regaki with the pull. Down four. This will be Hussein tomorrow. Looks like junk from Australia. Ortiz. Hussein. Atkinson wide open over the top. Will Ortiz find him? Nope. Content to play catch with Hussein. Grant. Hussein. Ortiz. Grant calls for it on the weak side and will get it from Ortiz. Big cross field throw. Great vision for Mike Grant. Jonathan Woolrich. 16 11. And Canada's really feeling it. Yeah. They're, They're within one point. The connection between Ortiz and Grant here. And the and vision the here to see not that, only the open player, look, but the alley that was that. not open when he lets go of it. But was going to be open. But was going to be open. Opens while the disc is in the air. Goal. Nasty throw from Mike Grant. He didn't throw the Why didn't he throw the hammer? He's Mike Grant. All right. But, all right. What a great throw. What a great throw. What's interesting there, that's diagonal to diagonal. Yeah. So even though it only chews up, you know, it travels vertically only half the field. It's it's still like a 65-yard throw almost. So we've got na 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 hey hey from the Canadian fans, and oi this and oi that from the Australian fans. Game point, Canada to win. Burwell. Whereas. Burwell. Regaki calls for it. It's going to get it on the weak side from Burwell. McDonald with a chance for oh, deep. Can't get it. Regaki. is a nasty grab. Great D by McDonald, and it's just not enough. Two flips. Burwell on the goal line. Will he go back to Regaki? No, because he's got Doty wide open. That's Ryan with the goal. 16-12. It's just Here's fun the hawk to watch. To Regaki. The Two Regaki McDonald. Oh my god, that's so much big dude in the air. That's 12 feet off the ground. Yeah. And Burwell. And then Ryan just coning his defender. Ooh. Nice cut from Ryan. Great finish by Australia. Yeah, great finish. And here it is. Wow. 
I think McDonald, in his head right there, I saw him say, wow. What do I got to do? What? Wow. Well, while Duncan McDonald is saying, what do I got to do? We got to take a break. Welcome back. It is game point at the 2012 Whiff Diff World Ultimate and Guts Championships. Tom Regacki putting on a show, but still down four points. 12-6 to Team Canada, where Mauro Ortiz has been showing throwers how it's done. Regacki with the pull. Hussein to field it. Straight away to Ortiz. Grant in space, but they're gonna run a return play to Hussein. Hussein goes a little bump move. It's gonna come back on a foul call. They just use Mike Grant as a decoy. They do. I'm actually really surprised that Australia is falling for it here and putting Tom Regaki on him. You don't want to leave him alone, don't get me wrong. But he he's really worked only as a handler. Hussein. Ortiz. Hussein. Nice D downfield by the Australians. Scuba. Great D by Booth. Can't get there. Reaching to Atkinson. Can he get there? Off his hands. And Australia's got a little more life. Coming back on a foul, foul call. Called. Ortiz saying Booth got him. And he did. You think you don't think you think a knee to the thigh is a foul? Here's the catch. Atkinson just a bit short. Definitely a foul. Okay. Ortiz with the disc. Hussein well defended. Ends. Can't get there. Too far from Ortiz. And that's a clean turn. Booth jogging to pick it up. Australia with a chance for a break. Rigaki. Too short. Oof. Was that still alive? Doesn't matter. Mike Grant looks for it. Picks it up. No Unmarked. Marked. Australia protecting the deep shot. Ends. Atkinson. Grant going out. Miscommunication. Sanderson with the block. Finds Regaki. Sanderson. Looks off the gap. Booth. Too far, no, oh, great catch. Bulford, Bloomer, hugs it to Regaki, ends, Grant, Regaki! Oh my gosh! That is another enormous grab. At 12, 12 and a half feet by Tom Regaki. Beating ends and Grant, not even really close. Tom Regaki. And Australia With fans break. love it. Here's the throw. Defense collapses. No chance for Mike Enns. That's a poster. And Australia taking a timeout here. Great call. Absolutely great call by Australia. They want to rest their horses. They're chipping away, 13-6. They're chipping away. They used their last time out, but it just, they need every point from here on out. Yes. And if they don't feel like they're ready to play D, call a timeout. And we see on our sideline here, Tom Regacki taking a long, walk 
yeah. down to his water bottle. And runner Sanderson as well. Both those guys working so Working hard. so hard. Absolute show from Tom Regacki. If you're Canada here. Yeah. The other team has taken a timeout. Giving, really, I mean, I think you're right, only, the reason only being to rest. To rest. It gives Canada an opportunity to really dial in. Yeah. And in a way, I, if you're down it, there, I think you're basically just saying. It doesn't matter what that dude does on offense if we don't give him the disc. Yeah, and, and Tom's a great defensive player as well, but, you know, and has picked up trash here and there. Yeah. When the Canada offense is clean, as it was for the majority of this game, they, they, Australia can't stop him with one man. No. And when they turn it and let him do that right there. That's when they're getting in trouble. That's when they're getting in trouble. So the Canadian offense has hinged so much on what Mauro Ortiz has done. Australia, as they're selecting their matchups here, that's the matchup that should get first priority amongst all the others. Second priority, I'd go to Mike Enns. He had a good runner on Mike Enns, but the first matchup they need to control, Mauro Mar Ortiz. Huge pull from Wagaki. Hussein lets it fall. Ortiz, defended by Booth. Woolridge defended by Sanderson. It floats in a crowd. Regaki with a block and a foul call by Atkinson in the middle of the field. And the crowd does not like this call. There's a collision in traffic. I'm not Here's sure. Here's the floater from Woolridge. That's a tough one. What an opportunity for Australia there. It hurts to not come away with a clean. I'll weigh in on the foul call. Essentially, that's a second effort bid. You only can ever really call second effort bid if you know you're going to get it. Woolridge, though, to Grant, defended by Regaki. The rain is really coming down all of a sudden. Hussein, defended by Bloomer. Grant. Woolridge churning across the field to Ortiz. Wrong guy to leave open. Booth, though, checks down. Here's the huck. That's going to work. Roberts. He's got ends. He's going to find him. And that's going to be it. But we're coming all the way back, folks. That's not game. That's a travel call. Ortiz going to argue. But it's not going to matter. We're going to have a great look at it here on the pivot. He did adjust his pivot foot early, before the throw. He scooted. I know you're looking at me like I'm insane, but I thought he scooted his pivot foot. Yeah, but I mean, what's it matter? It had no effect on that throw. When it actually no, got I do. time. I, I think it did. The mark sets up. He scoots it out away and then steps hard for the backhand. We're coming back. Ortiz with the disc, 65 yards to go. Canada 13, Australia, or Canada 16, Australia 13. Ortiz, he's just going to do it again. Can ends get there? No. Two turnovers from Mario Ortiz. And Ortiz is incensed at his receiver there for giving up on yeah, the Yeah, Mark play. Roberts breaking off the cut. Australia taking a slow walk to the disc. We're back to saying, Booth, go pick it up. Bloomer I am going to run. Bloomer sets out. Gray, the downside handler. Sanderson, wide open.
Booth. Bulford. Regaki. Sanderson. A lot of contact on the mark coming back. Grant on Regaki. Canada is so jumpy both when Tom Regaki goes deep as well as when he throws that big deep huck fake. fake. You feel like Australia ought to be able to get more underneath on this. Game slow here. Regaki to Booth, and Regaki's going. Bumped by Grant, but he wants it. Nope. Breaks it off. Fulford. Booth. Sanderson. Pick called. Going back to Booth. Great D by Mike Grant there. Regaki wanted the throw and go, and about three steps in, Mike Grant just dropped Lays the shoulder. The shoulder. Booth at the disc. Regaki going. Sanderson instead. Pick called. It comes back to Booth. Nope, to Sanderson. Clump stack from the Australians. Regaki 50 yards off disc. Receiver Sanderson. Mark by Atkinson. Booth defended by Roberts. Really the only good option right now for Sanderson. To Booth. Regaki under. Great break. And an unforced error on the sideline. Great defensive job by Mike Grant to on control Tom Regaki. Tom Regaki. Absolutely. Great D on Mauro Ortiz. But he gets up and gets it. He's got a chance for a win. Bloomworth, a great poach. Hussein on the sideline. Ryan with awesome physical defense on Mauro Ortiz. Sanderson's going to call pick on Warridge, and we're going back to Ortiz. Matt Several times this game, I've seen Mauro Ortiz get open on a spin move. It is a, it, I mean, that is a, an orthodox move. And he's working it. Matt Ryan's playing. Great D. Great D right now. Really physical. Really getting up and challenge Ortiz to create separation. Ends. Roberts going out. Ends going to take a shot. Defended by Booth for the win. Can Booth get the block? He can't. Mark Roberts. Canada wins. 17-13, Mike Enns, Mark Roberts. A classic connection. For the Team Canada win. On the day, Canada gold and a silver. Here's the shot from Enns. Nice bid by Booth, great athletic. Way to get up high, Mark Roberts. Great receiver. Under duress. Take contact, contact, hangs on. Finishes strong. Chase, something I've been wondering about. Do you have a player of the game? Well, Lou, that's a great question. Do you have a player of the game? Because I, I have one in mind. and Go first. I, I'm, I'll go first. Tom Regaki, I think. He came up so big. And there he is. Tom Regaki had so many good grabs, I lost track. He was huge on offense underneath. He was huge on offense deep. He picked up the trash on D. And I actually think Australia used him really wisely where they needed him and saved him and let the other pieces work around him when he wasn't available. But God, the guy is a beast. What a show. Lou, did you have a player of the game? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to go to the winning side here. Mauro Ortiz. He had 
a couple turnovers late, but the whole early, early portion of the game, the whole early portion of the game, his throwing ability was absolutely tremendous. He just picked apart this Australian defense. I agree. So for me, I mean, Tom Rogacki, if we could both pick him, that'd be cool, but we can't. I got to go with Mauro Ortiz. What an incredible job from the KG veteran handler, really put on the show and just delivering so many awesome throws. Definitely. Tomorrow, Chase, we've got three great games, all finals, women's final, mixed final, open final. I am psyched for those games. Me too. For everybody here at Next Gen Ultimate, you've seen two divisions in the books. Women's Masters goes to the United States. Men's Masters to Canada. Tomorrow, three to be determined. I'm Lou. I'm Chase. We're awesome, and so are you. See you tomorrow.